rap mazee tumezaliwa nao tuseme hivyo Juma mangu aliniza kwa dam site na iko na chengine eh, mimi sikuweza ku grow kwa masomo kabidi niingie kwa dam ningangane kimaisha nisaidie mada Hey, mimi naokota box usiku mzima sijalala kilo moja na uzio shilingi 4 shilingi tatu ya box ambapo hiyo ni pesa kidogo sana hii saidia hata mkitambo fikisha kilo 20 ndio uko na shilingi 70 we want this industry to be recognized because most of the participants are people of low caste you have to get somebody then who can take that with from the point of generation to the point of final disposal. And usually that person is your typical uh, scavenger that you have talked about. Wale wanafanya hii kazi, wanafanya kazi muhimu kulingana na mimi vile naona lakini bado hawajatambulika. Driving or walking in major towns in Kenya, there are places where pollution levels are extreme. In Nairobi's large slums of Kibra, Madhari and Dandora, for example, residents dump their waste on the roadside and it is solid waste that cannot go unnoticed. Huge piles of rubbish being burnt or dumped accumulate over a period of time, posing not only environmental but health risk for millions of lives through air pollution. It is estimated that Kenya generates 22 metric tons of waste per day, with around 60% of it being organic waste that can be recycled to something else. Every minute, the equivalent of one garbage truck of plastic is dumped into our ocean. Plastic pollution is a global problem. Approximately 7 billion of the 9.2 billion tons of plastic produced from 1950 to 2017 became plastic waste, ending up in landfills or dumped. Mombasa is the seaport city of the coast of Kenya, along the Indian Ocean. It is the country's oldest and second largest city after the capital Nairobi, with an estimated population of 1.5 million people. Its metropolitan region is the second largest in the country and has a population of approximately 3 million people. Currently, the city generates over 1,000 tons of waste daily. Uh, the population in Mombasa is about 1.2 a million people and uh, this 1.2 million people uh, we estimate that the per capita generation of solid waste is about uh, 0 0.6 there about that gives you about uh, 900 tons of solid waste generated per day that is then supposed to be managed by the county government of Mombasa. Solid waste management in Kenya is still a major challenge and a health risk to residents living close to dump sites. Its management is an expensive venture, gobbling up huge amounts of revenue. Now, if you look at uh, that volume, it creates uh, one major challenge. Is that how do you collect, transport and dispose as mandated by the constitution? Uh, if you look at that tonnage, if you wanted to be, for example, 100% efficient in evacuation of 900 tons, you may need probably about 60 uh, or so tipping trucks, the normal tipping trucks, operational every day for you to, to do that, that work. And that is huge. So you find that most counties then um, have a collection efficiency, uh, particularly, of about, particularly in developing countries of about uh, 40 to at most 60%. I think in Mombasa now, I will put the collection efficiency at about 56% uh, or thereabout. So that means that um, about 44% of the waste that is actually generated is not formally managed and so it will leak into the environment uh, Mombasa being a coastal city it may also leak into the ocean there is no formal sorting of waste and the activity is mainly in the hands of informal sector of which scavengers are major stakeholders street pickers and dump site pickers are different types of scavengers uh, what is interesting is that um, Mombasa as a county and as a city does not have a good collection infrastructure. So as a household, when you generate your waste, if you are, for example, uh, uh, five people or thereabout, uh, if you multiply by 0.6 uh, or thereabout, you are talking about three kgs of waste probably you will generate in a day. So in, in, in a week, we are talking about uh, maybe 20 kgs generated. Now, there is no place next to your house 
where you can drop that that waste and so what usually happens is that um, you have to get somebody then who can take that waste from the point of generation to the point of final disposal and usually that person is your typical uh, scavenger that you have talked about so then they play a very good and a very important role of uh, taking waste from where it's generated to where it's supposed to be he calls me mimi kwa ifanya na kama 9 years na kitu ilifanya ni ingie kwa dump bana ni shida tu za nyumbani like kama divorce of mother and father eh saa ba miliji kutafaima sha dump juli asa kuzoele kutembea na mabeste kukuja saa unakuta ukikuja kwa dump unatoka uko na 50 uko na 100 ukifika home pale kumepika ukiona hiyo police mind inaweza kulanja ama kama kumekosekana unasaidia pale nyumba sasa ile ndio ikakuwa mazoea ya kukuwa dump dump ilikuwa huko hivi kibarani eh before tukuje huko town sasa hivi ndio hivi mazoea mazoea ikaingia kwa damu sasa itakuwa sasa ni kutoka kwenda kazini tunaifanya tu kama kazi sasa tumechukulia kama kazi lakini pia tumekuja huko hiyo ina changamoto changamoto inatokea na wapi mimi urauka mida ya saa tisa za usiku nikirauka mida ya saa tisa nichukue mkokoteni nizunguke kwa kila nyumba yani mitaa mitaa nikiokota zile taka za manyumba manyumba nikiwa kwa mkokoteni ndio natoka huko na janazo hapa zikifika hapa kuna ile gari lenye anga linabeba hizi taka ile gari tunapakia ndani mimi na sort pale natoa plastiki chupa nini na kakando eh ikifika ile mida ninaenda nauza nipate kile kidogo pia mimi nipate cha kuweka tumboni yani nategemea ni ukipata hata kilo moja hiyo ndio utauza uta, uta, tu uingize ile ya siku eh chupa na ndio shilingi tatu mwanze tunapambana tu hivyo hivyo eh unakuta ni left ni ngumu lakini tutafanyaje Eh, unakuta jamaa amekuja hapa pia unataka kumlodia mkokoteni wake upande juu kwa gari. Jamaa anaweza kulipa kama 50 mkokoteni mzima. Lakini hakuna cha kufanya, mazee inabidi ukubali. Yeah. Most of the material consists of variety of papers, cardboards, metal scrap, plastic, bones and many more. The price of an item depends on the quality of agreement among scavengers and the contractors. The earnings of scavengers depend on the recovered amount of recyclable materials from waste or purchasing from the households and the quality of recyclable materials collected. Uh, the reason why they are scavengers is because they are picking something from the waste stream. Now, what they are picking from the waste stream are valuables that have uh, that can get them money. And this may be bottles, plastic bottles. This may be cardboard this may be metals that's what they are looking for now the market for those products is not really well regulated there's a lot of fluctuation in the market on, on on those products so usually they will not get the value for the product they have taken to the guy who is going to get those products for a price so if for example a kg of plastic bottles is 40 shillings the scavengers may be selling them at 5 shillings or 10 shillings or something like that so they they are not, they are being ripped off uh, from the sweat that they have they were shared to, to to get those to, to, to those materials limskia president mwaka mpya ya hotuba yake akisema to conserve environment ndio kazi hii ya conserve environment hii bila hao mji ungekuwa umechafuka sana lakini ukiona mji as it is ni kwa ajili hawa vijana ambao saa nyingine watu wanawaita machokora wanafanya kazi muhimu ni maengineer hawa tuwapatie tuwaite maengineer kwa sababu kazi yao wanajenga the overall impact of activities of scavengers is positive economically and environmentally this can be improved further if the government or organized private sector helps them by organizing them providing them medical health facilities like ppes and financial incentives we are now in the process of getting kind of rid of single operators we call them scavengers because it's very difficult to manage them if they work as individuals so through the county government and through WWF we have encouraged them to form groups so that they can work as groups by being together then there will be improved performance they can easily be recognized they can easily get funded for example some of the groups have been funded and they are getting equipment like 
uh, tuk-tuks so that they can use instead of mkokoteni they use tuk-tuks for transporting of waste so uh, the, the, the scavengers they are operating yes as individuals but our goal is to make sure that in the long run they work as groups so that they can be assisted in but the question is are scavengers truly recognized or their inputs into environment conservation acknowledged the scavengers were looked at as problems in waste management and they were the ones causing the littering and and, 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 and the problems we are having. So what we did is that we recognized them as stakeholders in waste management. So we changed their name from scavengers to waste managers. And now they are called waste managers. At the moment, they are being registered and given identification badges. So basically, the county has uh, formalized the informalities that were there. So I wouldn't say now we have scavengers, but we have waste managers who are recognized by you know, recognized by the county government and administration and engaged in the waste management process. And um, I think as of now, I would say that the ones that are formally on record are about 1,700 active players in waste management that were formally called scavengers. Wanahitaji kusaidiwa. Mtu mwingine asiwaone, akaanza kuwatusi, kuwaona ni wachafu ni Yule uchafu ni uniform ya kazi yao. Ni uniform ya kazi yao. Kwa hivyo wanahitaji watambulikane, wapatiwe ID hata wanapoingia nyumbani kwa mtu wasionekane kwamba hati wameinterfere. No, wanaenda kufanya ile kazi nzuri ya usafi. But they still play a big role. And uh, I think one of the challenges that they face, I would say, one is um, they don't have the necessary uh, uh, equipment to do what they are doing. Uh, what I mean is that uh, waste is, is a dirty, is a dirty, is a dirty engagement, and so you will need gloves uh, to protect your fingers. You know, you can land into maybe needles and whatever that can break you. Uh, you may need uh, maybe a mask because uh, sometimes you are dealing with waste that has been out there for two weeks or thereabouts, so the smells can be uh, quite heavy uh, on you. And sometimes areas where uh, waste is found, they are not very, very dry areas. And so you may need also the footwear to be the ideal for that purpose. So you'll find that most of those you are calling scavengers don't have that kind of attire. And so they are prone to uh, diseases once in a while. And, 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 and in fact, almost always they are suffering from one disease or another. I would say that's one of the biggest challenges. Kama kuna watu huko nje mazao ananiona na wanatuona sisi kama tunasema si ni masla. Ah, tuko hapa tunapambana na life. Wanaweza kutusaidia hata kama hawana uwezo wa kututoa hapa tupelekee mahali tuweza jiendeleza. Yaani wanatusaidia na vifaa vya kujikinga kama glove, overall magambu juu hapa kuna chupa. Na ukicheki mimi nafanya kazi economy tu hivi hakuna glove. Unakuta unakatwa na chupa unapoteza damu nyingi unaweza kuto umedungwa na masindano hivi na magonjo ujui inepita tu hivyo ambao uh, kweli ni hali mbaya hiyo tunapitia ya yani kama wanatuona huko maze ni jiomba sana maze watusaidie kama sisi eh, yani kutuletea tu vifaa vya kutukinga sisi whether scavengers waste managers or any other name one may wish to call them this group of youth occupy a dignified place in Kenya's war on climate change. Sadly, they remain Kenyans as celebrated heroes of war on climate change.